Brought to you by Veteran Rescue Mission, highlighting the good in our community. I am Pastor John McLean, here with my bosom buddy, Andreas Ruiz of I Believe in Myself Coaching. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. It just feels so good being in the studio with you again. I know. It's been a while. It's been forever. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Last week, I was all by my lonesome, and it was was sad. Uh, I did shed at least one tear. Mm. And then the week before that, you were without me. So I'm I'm sure you bawled your eyes out. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. A couple of tears. It's okay. It's okay. (laughs) Well, we're back together again here to make radio magic for the world. And um, we got some great guests for it, because like usual, especially... Uh, via you we got some powerhouse women in studio Mm -hmm. here with us we got um tori fortune who is if uh, a famous artist that the world doesn't even know about yet just Mm -hmm. you know just a a, a amazing few hundred thousand people probably and um she's also been doing a lot of awesome events around town kind of making a platform for other people so that's going to be cool to have her on and then also we're going to have diana Charbonneau. Charbonneau. Yeah, I was mm-hmm. I was going to butcher it. but From, I, su- I, I, from Impact of Southern Arizona. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, and they were having an event on <clears> Tuesday <throat> um, with all kinds of nonprofits, with all kinds of workshops, all kinds of good stuff going on. So, yeah, we look forward to hearing about that. Yeah. And then on the tail end of the show, we're going to be talking about one of our favorite um, auto shops in town, MPG mm-hmm. Automotive, and the amazing work that they're doing training people on mechanics and then just you know all the great deals that coming out of mpg automotive we also we certainly want to show them some love um being one of our sponsors and probably what we'll do in that time is do our sponsor spotlight as well just to kind of remind people of all the amazing organizations that make this radio show and then our our print editorial common good news happen and make it so um you guys get to hear us every week and me and andreas get to hang out every week (laughs) whether we like it or not Yes. Yeah. But uh, all that being said, actually, man, something we haven't done in a while, which is weird, Mm -hmm. but this would not be the Common Good Radio Show (laughs) without the start of a little prayer. Yeah. So let's let's do that. And and it and usually I would do the Lord's Prayer or or something of that nature, but I'm just gonna just pray right off the dome, freestyle, (laughs) just bars prayer today. There you go. And uh, yeah, if if everybody out there in the world, bow your head, close your eyes, um, you know, whatever you do for comfort to speak in prayer, but I'm gonna say a little prayer. Dear Lord, thank you so much for bringing us here together today. Thank you so much for loving us, for continuing to bless us, even when we think that we have trials and tribulations. You remind us, Lord, that you're here for us and that you're going to be, you're going to take care of us and get us through it. I thank you so much for loving us, allowing us to love each other, teaching us the way of compassion and heartedness. I thank you so much, Lord, for everybody that you put in our lives and, and for allowing us to be here to make an amazing show and share some amazing good news with the public as a whole. In your son's name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. So that being said, we got a, we have a woman that actually I met, um, Kind of almost introduced by God because we were we were both trying to do just some good old fashioned music stuff, but we both are are I'd like fair to say hardcore Christians, and that's kind of part of what we want to do and and um, you know bringing music and creating a music platform for the public. And and Tori does um, I, you know I I can't let me see the name. I, I want to think it's it's not necessarily a christian organization but certainly there's i've seen a lot of christian artists perform through you and kind of connected to you but i'll i've said enough i'll let tori fortune explain it to explain it herself thank you so much for being here with us tori thank you for having me that was a beautiful prayer and introduction i actually got a little bit teary-eyed so oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> that's, re- that's what i go for recompose myself here. <laughs> um, yeah. and we actually do have a christian branch so i have an organization called arizona music connection okay it started out as an organization to present songwriter showcases and different musical events around town and um, because I am a Christian and a Christian artist and my my brother is a Christian artist we mm. we did our first Christian it was it was like an outreach show event 
performance last fall. We did that together. And then that was the birth of Arizona Music and Ministries mm-hmm. Connection. Mm-hmm. Because I was like, nice. well, you know, this is such a, a beautiful thing that we did today. And we need to have a different branch that purely focuses on that. And because there's so many different music venues and music things, you know, they, especially with uh, the Christian hip hop artists, they hear the word rap and, the, and they run. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, no, <laughs> these guys are great. And they, you know, they're entertaining <clears throat> and they are putting a good message out there. So I needed to create something where I can have events and bookings with my Christian artists. And mm. so I have Arizona Music Connection and Arizona Music and Ministries Connection. So Okay. And so you, you fill us in on Arizona Music Connection. Fill us in on Songwriters at Sunset. So I spent some time in Nashville. I'm from Tucson, and then I moved to Nashville for a while where I got into songwriting, and I was performing at what they call Songwriter Nights. And when I moved back to Tucson, I was telling my husband, you know, when we get settled, I I would love to start my own Songwriter Night, you know, because Mm. I miss them. Mm -hmm. And the opportunity just kind of fell into my lap. Um, I was talking to Andres before about... um, procrastinating with things and waiting for the the right time to do things with Mm. everything in life and so it was not planned to do this when i when i did um i just kind of i I found uh the the foothills happy hour market actually it's a pop-up farmer's market kind of um Mm. out at the foothills mall they do it weekly and they were looking for live music Mm -hmm. and i i hit her up and i was like what are you looking for and well i'm looking for you know like bands to come play for four hours and i was like oh i don't have a band here yeah i i was working with um some players in nashville of course but i was like i just got back to town and i don't really have um a band yet and i don't have you know, I don't want to go play for four hours yet anyway. So I was like, what would you think about like a songwriter showcase? Because I've always wanted to start one. And she flipped for the idea. She loved Mm. it. And she helped me with my logos and to kind of brand myself. Her name is Susan Allen, wonderful Mm. woman. And so we created Songwriters at Sunset, which initially was something that we were just going to have at the Foothills Market. And then um, so many artists loved what we were doing with showcasing songwriters. There's not enough outlets for original artists. Mm. Most places that book live music, they're they're bars that Mm -hmm. want cover songs, you know. And I know what it's like as an artist, first and foremost, to want to to want to have your stuff heard you want Mm. you're proud of it when you write a song you know Mm. and you want to perform it so we started the songwriter showcase and now i'm doing um so that one's monthly and then now i've been doing a weekly show at the rockabilly grill nice and i have other venues that have approached me about doing different things and different events and i actually had an event planning business back in nashville so i'm kind of combining my love and passion for both music and events and um, helping other artists as well as myself to get our our music and voices heard. Mm. So nice, nice, good so. stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's amazing, <clears throat> and definitely, it, <throat> I just like <clears throat> like the one you taking you know the, your skills and applying them, which you know something we we encourage people to do regularly on this show, but also just creating something out of whole cloth that's super cool like particularly around the you know so- songwriters at sunset and now what you're doing at rockabilly's is i can just just one one step after another and you know i guess before i even get in the question of you know what what you're looking at next we're going to actually go into break show a little brought to you by veteran rescue mission highlighting the good in our community and speaking of the good in there in our community we have tori fortune here in studio with us talking about um you know her her story of how how she got here some of the awesome stuff that she's doing now she's talking about the arizona music connection we talked about the songwriters at sunset uh, what's the event at rockabilly called that one songwriters at sunset as well but oh, okay. the, the difference between the monthly and the weekly is mm. i've been doing the monthly one at foothills where we showcase six to eight artists and they do shorter sets and then at rockabilly it's more of an, an easy listening listening room kind of vibe where mm. it's it's a shorter show and we bring in three artists that do longer sets and it's more of a, a feature on the, the the best of the best of songwriters at sunset basically nice, nice. okay and then also, we have yet to cover it, but um, you also do the Miss Sonoran Sunshine Pageant. 
Fill yeah. us in on that. So I got involved with the pinup community last year, which some people don't really know what the pinup community is. It's it's very classy. <laughs> it's nothing wrong here or anything bad. Um, it's, it's more just it's dressing up vintage, and there's a lot of philanthropy and giving back. Each pinup pageant is a fundraiser. There's mm. always a nonprofit involved, always. Mm. And so I started one last year, and I met a woman named Amber Kerr down in Tombstone at the one that we did down there. And her and I hit it off, and then we actually found out that we were neighbors. Mm. We, bo- we both live in Picture Rocks. We're like, who else lives in Picture Rocks? <laughs> Apparently just, we just do. Six. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just a handful of us. Yeah. So. And she wanted to host her own pinup pageant um, in benefit of a little girl named Sarah who has type 1 diabetes and mm. needs some help with medical bills. Mm-hmm. So she was, you know, really passionate about this project and she needed a venue and she was having a hard time finding one and was going to pay out of pocket for a city space. And I said, no, 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 no. I host music shows and I have venues that I do shows at. I said, mm. let's incorporate them and let's have a concert slash pinup pageant. Mm. So she loved the idea. I loved the idea. So we joined forces and we're doing a special full band showcase for songwriters at sunset that's intertwined with the Miss Sonoran Sunshine pinup pageant. We're holding it at Borderlands Brewing Company. They have a beautiful patio mm. and a great side parking lot that we're going to have our car show in. Pinups take photos with classic cars. It's something that we add into the pinup events. So it's going to be a car show, uh, a benefit for Little Miss Sarah, and you're going to have a concert, and you're going to see some ladies get crowned, and it's going to be a great time on March 12th. Yeah, from three sounds to like seven. a happening. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So March 12th from <coughs> 3 to 7 mm-hmm. at Borderlands. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then um, what are what are what other events do you have coming up? Well, we have the event at Borderlands. We are continuing weekly at Rockabilly. Um, And the general initial idea with the Foothills show, because I received sponsors for that. Thank you to my sponsors. Mm. You know who you are. Um, We decided to have a season, especially because it's, it's an outdoor show. We had the season from October to May. So the idea was that each season we would have different sponsors and then we would wrap in May because it's outdoors and in the summer it gets pretty hot. So Mm. especially in Arizona. Mm -hmm. So in May we're having a songwriter contest actually. And I booked that at Borderlands again as well just because I love their venue. Their patio is so beautiful. So we are going to have a songwriter contest on May 7th where we bring our best songwriters from the past season and our sponsors for this season are actually going to be our judges Hmm. so they're going to perform one maybe two songs kind of a bam 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 you just come up do your song you're judged on certain different things stage presence originality lyrics things like that Mm -hmm. and then we're going to have trophies and fun things and prizes and it's also my thank you to my artists for for this first debut season they have put on some great shows and i want to to thank them and recognize them so Mm -hmm. we're having a songwriter contest and 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 um, we'll see what other events happen. I have some other opportunities that have been approached to me that aren't um, finalized yet, so I won't speak on them yet. But we mm. have lots of fun <coughs> things coming nice. up this year. Nice. Nice. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, and it sounds like you're giving a lot of opportunities to a lot of people, mm-hmm. and you're also uh, serving the community. So it's it's definitely a lot of great work that you're doing, and we yeah. appreciate that. And so I want to ask you, like, what are some of your top artists that you manage? Well, we have Uncommon Crossroads, which is a full band. They do Americana folk rock. It's Mm. led by Maria Montagnini. She's an amazing songwriter. Actually, when I first met her, she wasn't songwriting. And I said, girl, you're a songwriter. You just don't know it yet. Mm -hmm. And ever since she has, I am so impressed by her. (coughs) She has been songwriting her tail off and she has turned it into she's looking at it from a business standpoint and she's like this is my band it's my business and so i'm very proud of maria with uncommon crossroads Mm -hmm. and i also have craig Jemmett, and um he's one of my christian artists i have nico barbarin he's a such a talented guitar player from chile actually Mm -hmm. that came all the way to us from tucson um I have Jesus Gang, which is a Christian rap duo. Mm. I have John Linlin, who's an amazing um, jazz guitarist and songwriter. I could go on and on. I have so many great artists. Um, mm. And I have, um, as far as my, my Christian artists, we have the 
music and ministries branch that we're actually, as far as another event goes as well, we're having an outreach show that I'm trying to have on Easter weekend. I'm not sure where we're going to have it yet, Mm. but I want to bring the word to the general people that wouldn't necessarily go to an event like that or go to church or try to seek that type of event. I want to bring it to the streets. You know, Mm. I want to bring the word to the streets and bring the artist to the people and, and um, have an outreach event. So yeah, we have lots of different genres and and missions with what we're doing. Yeah, well, something that, and we have probably a couple minutes we have to go out of here. But something that um, I'm not hearing is you in Tennessee. You're an artist, and it definitely seemed like you probably put a lot of energy and time and energy your whole life to mm-hmm. be an artist. What about here? What if, what is your what if, have you been performing or are you or mm-hmm. yeah? So Tell what I do, career. I don't always sing at songwriters at sunset mm-hmm. but because you know I, I don't want it to just be you know the tory show all the mm-hmm. time it's not what it's about it's about giving back to the other artists but i am an artist myself so sometimes i sing one or two um our last monthly show in february it was my birthday so i did a full set mm. and i've been singing to tracks that i had produced they're actually produced in mexico which made me feel like my music was going international i felt really Mm, cool mm, um (laughs) and but i am looking for the right guitar player and band to work with out here and so i can play with players again um but until then i am very happy with just singing my songs to my tracks and and, Mm. you know they're still my songs and i get to sing them and so i sing here and there at the shows and once i find the right guitar player to work with um i'll be out there doing shows as a duo is my vision i want to have i had a duo in nashville my partner Mm -hmm. was john martin very accomplished songwriter and guitar player and we would uh, do shows together so i'm hoping to do that again out here that's awesome. awesome. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Thank you for sharing all that information mm-hmm. and bringing in this uh, this positive attitude and all the th- amazing things that you're doing. So for anybody that wants to reach out or find out about you, like where can uh, we find you online and how can people get in touch with you? Well, we're on all of the major platforms. We have um, a Facebook group, Arizona Music Connection. That's more for if you're an artist or own a venue, if you're If you have something musical related in Arizona, you can join the Arizona Music Connection group. That's where we we network, we post events, we collaborate, we share gigs, things like that. And then we have a Facebook page, Arizona Music Connection Events. That's for the general public to follow and they see our flyers and our events. We have an Instagram page. It's Arizona underscore music underscore connection. We also have a website, ArizonaMusicConnection.com. I'm your speaker and coach, Andres Ruiz, alongside the Pastor John McLean. Mm -hmm. And um, so next we have a very, very special guest. Uh, This woman is somebody that I really appreciate. And then, I mean, I've known her for quite some time Mm -hmm. now. And, you know, I've seen all the amazing work that she's done for our community, for for the people. I mean, she's just a a person that just does it all. Mm -hmm. And um, so we have uh, our very special guest, Diana Charbonneau with Impact of Southern Arizona. Welcome, Diana. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me, you guys. For sure. Thank you for being on the show. And so, uh, Diana, uh, just so for anybody that doesn't know about Impact, um, tell us a little bit about, you know, what is Impact of uh, Southern Arizona and what, you know, what do you do at Impact? Sure. Well, I actually find a lot of people haven't heard of Impact of Southern Mm. Arizona, Mm -hmm. even Mm -hmm. though, you know, we reinvest over two and a half million dollars back into the community each year. So we're a social services nonprofit, but we recently updated our mission statement to kind of reflect all of the things we do, Mm. which is really to help people get the resources required to pursue a stabilized and enhanced quality of life, which for a lot of people means different things, and we really call it moving forward. Mm. We have six major programs. That's our food bank, which we're most well known for, but we are so much more than a food bank. We have our clothing bank, youth programs. We deliver meals to seniors, backpacks for students. It's really just such a big operation that we run. Wow, that's amazing. And yeah, so you definitely provide so many services. And I've seen all the posts on your Facebook and all the things that you do for our community. I really appreciate you for that because if it was not for uh, you know Southern uh, Impact of Southern Arizona, there'd be a lot of people that would be suffering. So you know, thank you for doing that. And um, you know, so so tell us, like you know, uh, what's you know, you talked about the food bank. So it's, what sets you apart from being you know uh, a food bank in how you serve the community? 
I think part of it is how we have expanded over the last 20 years in the community and recognize the needs that we witness, especially through the pandemic. We changed our mission statement at a very odd time, but it really fit well because we recognize we can't just be a Band-Aid. You know, we bridge and stabilize people's budgets, but it's really about moving them forward. And so recently Mm -hmm. we have this Moving People Forward initiative where we are taking clients through the career certifications at Pima Community College through Mm -hmm. a partnership and sponsorship where, you know, these families who are making $40,000 or less for a family of four are now making a salary of $40,000 or more just for one individual. Um, I don't think a lot of people realize the level of poverty just for low income. It's just we drive from point A to point B and you never get to see that. And I know we've had this conversation often and it's really about the entire community uplifting each other and what we can do to give hope to those people. Yeah. And and I, I think you definitely do that. You know, you're you're definitely a person in the community that is trying to, you know, see how we can help out e- each other and and seeing like where those gaps are and, and you you're pretty much you know filling in the gaps that some people are not maybe aware of or maybe are not uh you know nobody else is doing what you're doing so mm. that's definitely appreciated and um tell us a little bit about you know what you do there and like you know what how has it been for you uh to to experience this type of service for our community it's been very eye-opening. I think anybody who goes into the nonprofit work from the private sector, you know, I just had a child, and until you really realize the struggles of child care on mm. the stress of a budget of a family, and especially for women, the, the constant battle to go to work or not because the cost of child care is too much. Mm. Um, like I mentioned, you know, we're all, we're all really one car accident, hospital visit, or, you know, one big event away from falling into that low income area because we all live check to check in you know most of this region so mm. it's really so important and i i do development so it's i get to raise our money and you know <laughs> I, they do all the great work we have 165 volunteer shifts a week wow and it's it's just to me it's just been so eye opening the support of the community and how everybody can come together to make such a huge endeavor possible and that's really what's been the best part of working at impact mm. yeah that's awesome and i know that um uh, impact is having a big uh expo that is coming up on uh, tuesday march 1st and uh, tell us about the expo and what can people expect sure and it, the the event kind of came about because we said what could we do to make this community conversation bigger than just our nonprofit partners And so we said, let's put on an event where we bring everybody in our local businesses to support local businesses. So it'll be 40, 45, 50 local businesses at the Tucson Chinese Cultural Center, a beautiful local venue if you haven't been there. Mm -hmm. And really, we want people to come in, interact with these great communities, businesses that really are the pillar of what a lot of what we do, you know, employment, jobs, it's all our small businesses and Our national speaker coming in is Bethany Tucker from the AHA process, where we're really going to talk about what we can do as a community to help people who are getting ahead in a just getting by world. And I I like to say that twice because, you know, getting ahead in a just getting by world that so many Mm -hmm. people are living in. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's yeah, that's definitely something that um, I think the community needs. And like you said, you know, bringing, it sounds like you're going to be bringing more awareness to our community by, uh, you know, having this event. And the more awareness that we can bring, uh, the the better that we can do to help out. Like, what are your thoughts about the awareness that is uh, going on in the community? Do Are people uh, aware enough or is there, what are your thoughts about that, like the awareness? I think there's a very big stigma of who goes to a food bank or a clothing bank or a rescue. You know, it's there's these images we have in our mind, and our speaker will go over that a lot, of trying to break down those stigmas because what the needs and wants of people in low income are just completely different. They can't see past the life preserver, whereas, you know, we're worrying about, you know, what vacation we're going to take next year and things like that. Um, so I think breaking down those stigmas and having that community conversation is really a big part of it. 
And we are going to have some fun though at the event. I had to, you know, get people there. We have chair massages, mm. we have a chiropractor on site. You know, healthy living and self awareness are very important because we need to take care of ourselves to take care of others. Mm, I love that. That's a big one right there. And uh, yeah, definitely going to hit up the massage and the, and the chiropractor mm-hmm. uh, for sure because <laughs> that's definitely something that we need. Uh, the self care is so important, and I think that. I think that that awareness is going to come like, hey, you know, you guys need to get maybe an adjustment or get a massage or or just, I mean, go out for a walk or whatever it is. Uh, I, I think that you're going to bring a lot to this, uh, you know, to this event with not just awareness of like, you know, hey, our community needs help, but also awareness to maybe the people that are going to be there that, hey, you know what, maybe I do need some self-care. Maybe I need to take care of myself. Um, how has self-care helped, helped you in your life? Well, we've had this discussion often, Andres. I <laughs> I have had serious health issues in my very young life, and so I am very well aware of how important it is to take care of yourself. Mm-hmm. But it's also very easy to preach it and not take care of yourself. But I'm working on it, especially with our big event coming up. But a lot of it is, I think, your support system, who you have behind you to, you know, also be real with you. Hey, it looks like you're burning out. You might want to take a step back. Mm-hmm. That's my big thing. I just need someone to kind of tell me. And self-care, I think a lot of it, it comes back to a lot of the things that I think would solve a lot of things in the world. <laughs> Absolutely. No, yeah. And I'm glad that I'm glad that you are bringing that to, to this event so people can see that, hey, you know what? Maybe I do need to take care of myself. Maybe I need to get that adjustment from time to time or uh, or that massage and but uh, but that's really cool. And, and I want to ask you, like, how can people support the expo and, and impact of Southern Arizona? Oh, of course. For the event itself, and you can get it off our main website, is impactsoaz.org. So that's impactsoaz.org. There you can find info about the expo, but also resources. So if you're looking for utility assistance, If you're looking for rental, housing, any of that, you know, sometimes it might not be a lot of resources we can push that way, but we have everything that you possibly could be looking for on there. And if you're in a situation where you need help and you're just not sure who to reach out to, feel free to just send us an email and we will connect you. We really want to, the big message we'd like to say is together we give hope we are here and there are people here to help. Mm, Yeah. And a question I have before we go to break, um, or actually before we take off, is um, what, you know, this is, it seems like this year kind of it's a it's a different type of planning or a different type of um, event than last year. But this, this event that you're doing, it's your flagship event. So how is like promotion and planning and, and structure going to be different this year compared to this event in the past years? Thanks, John. I think a lot of it has to do with the pandemic. You know, I purposely did this indoor outdoor because we just had a big wave come through of COVID. You know, a month ago there wasn't events going on. It was a big deja vu from 2020 when we had our big event. So I really had to plan that far in advance. And then, you know, promoting it, you know, poverty isn't the sexiest tagline, I'll be honest, but it's so important that I put this event together with the value to bring people because we are all going to support local and enjoy it and have fun. And as you know, Tucson, it's always a struggle getting people in the doors, but it'll happen last minute, however it happens. And I'm really excited. It's been, it's been coming. Nice. Awesome. Yeah. Well, Diana, thank you for, for being on. I really appreciate you and uh, everything that you do for the community. Uh, we had a great time, you know, just listening to everything that you had to say and just raising more awareness for our uh, people, you know, our listeners uh, to see that, you know, hey, there's help out there in case you're struggling or you know somebody that's struggling, you know, you can reach out to Impact of Southern Arizona. So thank you again for being on the show. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. And we look forward to having you guys. All right. Thank you. Absolutely. All right. All right. Well, thank you all for listening to the Common Good Radio Show brought to you by Veteran Rescue Mission. If you haven't been to VeteranRescueMission.org, please go check it out. See all about our show. See all about uh, the services that we do in helping homeless veterans and ways that your organization can plug in to be promoted on our show or through the Common Good News. Uh, Definitely excited to talk about all the amazing sponsors, all the amazing organizations that have supported us, that we support in this month's edition of the Sponsors Spotlight.
There should be sound like some cool music that goes along with that, but we, we don't have that. We can't afford that. But anyways, in the sponsor spotlight, definitely want to start off um, with talking about one of my favorite organizations in the city. Certainly when I had transmission issues, they were there. When I needed new tires, they were there. When I needed to um, have work, when I just need routine oil change, um, they're the one that's that's there. And and uh, when I say this name, you're going to recognize them because they're all over the city. There's, I believe, 10 different locations that they have in this city, and that organization is MPG Automotive. MPG Automotive. And I had the good fortune of... Um, of bumping into um, MPG Automotive and the VP of MPG Automotive, Patrick Lopez, uh, through Gap Ministries, which um, Gap Ministries being another one of our amazing sponsors that that we have on the show regularly, and we're more than happy to support the work that they do to um, a, a new a nonprofit that supports community. Um, but the connection of MPG to Gap Ministries is <clears throat> they have been working with MPG Automotive has been working with Gap Ministries, well, I think, hey, three, four years now, um, doing a mechanic training program, uh, teaching, you know, people that are interested how to do, how to do mechanic work through a, a mechanic certification program. And it seems almost every single one of these people, if not every single one of the graduates of this program, end up you know, finding themselves a job with MPG Automotive or one of the other many um, amazing mechanic shops that we have around town. So um, this this being one of many uh, awesome things that MPG Automotive does for the community, but um, it's super cool. The more and more I heard about it, they I think they're going on their third or fourth cohort that have been through this program, got certified, and it's it's a, a prime example of the type of programs that we need in our community uh, to continue to, as, um, as, as I've heard in the past, help people move forward. And, uh, you know, kind of in, in that same vein to talk about Gap and, and what they do, uh, they have a community warehouse where veterans, elders, um, nonprofit organizations can go and get food, get need items at their warehouse, they, they help with foster care, so they have several foster homes, as well as they they do supervision. So parents that, that new, need to um, need supervision services, they can get it through them. And they also train people on being foster parents as well. Uh, and then they, they do a community food bank. So I, I know on Tuesday morning they have 22 nonprofits come and get pounds of food um, from them for absolutely on the house and um they also kind of in connection with a they run a church as well so i think every every sunday at their new um center of hope i believe it's called you can um you can attend you know one of their church services by the founder um greg ayers who is um is is an, an amazing guy we've had his son jason actually we've had him on the show once we've had his son Jason Ayers on the show a couple times. It's just amazing family doing amazing stuff um, for for the uh, the community and and what Greg says uh, regularly is he just asks God or you know how he can help and God told him you know look in your hand and that's kind of the the foundation of the Gap Ministry. So it's a, it's a super cool story to always hear and it's definitely it's an honor for us to be able to promote them any way that we can um as well as another amazing organization that that's been you know with us from the beginning we've been promoting for the longest time for over two years we'll be doing this show um and that's tucson international academy and we'll have we've actually it's been such a, a beautiful partnership between that organization that we actually i'm i myself am a, a co-host on that show with the superintendent of Tucson International Academy following this show called Making College Come True, uh, which talks about all the amazing work happening in Tucson International Academy, as well as teaches people how to make college come true in their life um, via the the book by Dr. Jennifer Herrera, Making College Come True, 10 Keys to Success. So um, definitely we, we have a lot of love and appreciation for Tucson International Academy and everything they've been doing to support us. Uh, on top of that, one of our I would say like our newer organizations that we're promoting is PPEP, PPEP Inc. If you haven't heard of them, definitely um, Google them, go online, check them out. They do kind of like Gap Ministries, an array of nonprofit services. They serve 
many populations, children, elders, um, disenfranchised population. They have a lot of, um, do a lot of work on the south side of Tucson. So they're just another amazing organization that we have on regularly that we, you can find an article and find um, their ad in the Coffee Good News at the many locations around around town. And um, I mean, by, full, by far, probably one of my favorite nonprofit organizations in the city. Um, and then outside of that, let's look. We have uh, North Star Hyperbaric, North Star Hyperbaric, located on Ina and La Choya. They actually do um, a brain injury work. So they do a lot of work around people who have had uh, brain trauma from either hitting your head or blast or, um, you know, kind of an array of ways that, that there can be damage there. They, they treat it through HBOT tanks and through a lot of different services so definitely check them out and then we got ironwood dental that um you know kind of self-explanatory but they are over on ina and la Choya as well and they do out of this world dental work pretty much anything from family to children to implants to whitening anything you could think of ironwood dental is that place and the and the you won't find you know kind of a, a more quality and quantity place uh, when it comes to to dental work, and then who else we got? Then obvious, um, definitely can't forget about Action Print and Copy. Um, if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't have thousands of copies of the Common Good News around the city. Um, they that that partnership between them and Veteran Rescue Mission has been out of this world, and we're just definitely so thankful to them. Want to say bless you, Action Print and Copy, for all the work that you do, and we are. Um, we're just so honored to to have you as as our sponsors, and um, that is this month's edition of the sponsor spotlight. This is the Common Good Radio Show, brought to you by Veteran Rescue Mission. I'm Pastor John McLean, and um, I if you have not been to VeteranRescueMission.org and checked out all the services that we do, all the ways that you can donate. Right now, we're definitely asking for car donations because we have lots of vets that need to get to appointments and 